Good morning, dear students. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mirta Fabian Bravo. I'm going to be your English teacher. You are welcome to your English class. The topic for today is present continuous. But before I start with a real topic, let's review about the pronouns. What are the pronouns? Do you remember? Yes, right? The pronouns are I, you, she, he, it, we, and they. Right? That. Now, these pronouns are going to conjunction with the verbs to be. And what are the verbs to be? Do you remember? Yes, right? Am, is, are. And what is the correct conjunction of the pronouns and the verb to be? I am, you are, she is, he is, we are, and they are. I am sure you did well. Now, let's see a video. Before I start with the real topic for today, we are going to review about the pronouns. What are the pronouns? Do you remember, dear students? Let's see. I, you, she, he, it, we, they. I, you, she, he, it, we, they. And what is the meaning of these words? ¿Y cuál es el significado de cada una de ellas? Veámoslo. I es yo. You, tú. She, ella. He, él. It, esto. We, nosotros. They, ellos o ellas. Repeat after me, please. I. You. She. He. It, we, they. Excellent students. Very good. Good job. Let's go to the verb to be. The verb to be. They are three, right? Ellos son tres. Am um, is arm. Um. Am um, is arm. Um. And what is the meaning of these words? ¿Y cuál sería el significado de estas palabras? Recordemos que ellos tres tienen el mismo significado. Ser o estar. Ser o estar. Am um, is arm. Um. They are going to conjunction with the pronouns. Ahora ellas van a conjugarse con los pronombres. Let's see. I am, she is, he is, it is, you are, we are, they are. Repeat after me, please. I am, she is, he is, it is, you are, we are, they are. Very good, students. Now, let's go to the main topic. Ahora vayamos al tema principal. That is, the present continuous. In what cases we use the present continuous? Let's read. Leamos. We use it to describe what is happening right now. Nosotros utilizamos para describir qué está sucediendo ahora mismo. You are listening to your teacher. Tú estás Escuchando a tu profesora. Very good. Now, we use it to describe pictures and photos. Nosotros lo utilizamos para describir imágenes y fotos. Veamos qué foto tenemos por aquí. Oh, what animal is this? ¿Qué animalito es este? It's a horse, right? It's a horse. And what is it doing? ¿Y qué está haciendo? What is it doing? ¿Y qué está haciendo? Parece que se está riendo, ¿verdad? Oh, a horse is laughing, right? A horse is laughing. Very good. Ok, entonces recordemos. Cuando utilizamos el presente continuo, para describir lo que está sucediendo en este momento y para describir imágenes y fotos, ¿verdad? Very good. Now, when you want to create a sentences in a present continuous, you have to learn 
the instructor, the grammar instructor. Cuando tú quieres hacer una oración con el presente continuo, tenemos que aprender primero lo que es la estructura gramatical. Veamos, let's go. Structure, affirmative form. First is the subject or pronoun. Primero es el sujeto o el pronombre, plus the verb to be, más el verbo to be, plus the verb with ing, más el verbo con ing, plus the complement. ¿Ok? Veamos. A ver. Ahora, ¿tú recuerdas qué significa el ing? Do you remember what is the ing? Yo sé que tú te acuerdas. A ver, vamos. ing. ING is ando, endo, yendo, right? Ando, yendo, yendo. Very good, students. Let's see in sentences. She is playing in the park. She is playing in the park. You are studying English. You are studying English. I am reading a book. I am reading a book. Okay. Subject pronoun. She, you, I. Verb to be is R am. Verb plus ing. Pledging, studying, reading. Complement. In a park, English, a book. Okay, this is the correct order, right? Repeat after me, please. She is playing in the park. You are studying English. I am reading a book. Excellent students. Very good. Good job. Now we are going to do some exercises. Okay? This is your turn. What is he doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? Él está viendo televisión, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo lo diríamos? He is... Watching TV, right? Primero pondríamos el pronombre, seguido de quién? Seguido del verbo to be. And then, después, el verbo con ing, the verb with ing. And finally, the complement. Let's see. He is watching television. Very good. Repeat after me, please. He is watching television. Very good, student. Very good. Next picture. What is he doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? Ella está jugando, ¿verdad? Está jugando un juego. ¿Y cómo lo diríamos en inglés? A ver, vamos. She, muy bien. ¿Seguido de quién? Del verbo to be. Después, and then, the verb with ing plus the complement. Entonces diríamos, she is playing on the computer. She is playing on the computer. Very good. Repeat after me, please. She is playing on the computer. Excellent. Next picture. What is he doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? Él está leyendo, ¿verdad? Está leyendo un libro. ¿Cómo lo diríamos en inglés? Vamos. He, muy bien, is reading a book. Come on. He is reading a book. Excellent. He is reading a book. Repeat after me, please. He is reading a book. Very good. Next picture. What are they doing? In this case, is they, right? Hay un error, ¿verdad? Tenemos que ponerle they, right? Porque son dos, recordemos que son dos. ¿Qué están haciendo? What are they doing? They are, recordemos que el they conjuga con are, they are playing games, right? Veamos. They are playing a game. Ellos están jugando un juego. Right, very good. Repeat after me. They are 
playing a game. They are playing a game. Excellent. Very good. Now, let's learn about the negative form. Vamos a aprender ahora la forma negativa. Structure negative form. Muy bien. Tenemos primero the subject or pronoun. El sujeto o el pronombre. The verb to be plus not plus the verb with ing plus the complement. Right? Remember the subject or the pronoun plus the verb to be plus not plus the verb with ing plus the complement. Let's see some examples. She's not playing in the park. She's not playing in the park. Next. You are not studying English. You are not studying English. Next. I am not reading a book. I am not reading a book. Okay, very good. You can notice after the verb to be is the word not. Puedes darte cuenta que después del verbo to be se encuentra la palabra not. Esa es su posición. Ese es el lugar que corresponde. Para hacer una oración negativa, el not va a ir después del verbo to be, pero antes del verbo principal. She is not playing in the park. You are not studying English. I am not reading a book. Muy bien. Repeat after me. She is not playing in the park. You are not studying English. I am not reading a book. Very good, students. Now is your turn. Now we are going to create sentences in the negative form with some pictures. He, what is he doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? But in affirmative form. What is he doing? He is taking a shower. Right? He is taking a shower. ¿Y qué no estará haciendo? Tenemos varias opciones, ¿verdad? He is not cooking. He is not cooking. Repeat after me, please. He is taking a shower. He is not cooking. Excellent. Very good. Next picture. What is she doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? ¿Qué está haciendo ella? She is washing the dishes. She is washing the dishes. Right? ¿Y qué no estará haciendo? Many things, right? Many things, many activities. For example, she is not washing her hands. She is not washing her hands. Right? Ella no está lavando sus manos. Ella está lavando los platos. Very good. Repeat after me, please. She is washing the dishes. She's not washing her hands. Excellent. Very good. Next picture. He is washing his hands. Right? He is washing his hands. Él sí se está lavando las manos. Right? ¿Y qué no está haciendo? He's not sleeping. He's not sleeping. Él no está durmiendo, right? Repeat after me, please. He is washing his hands. He is not sleeping. Excellent. Very good. Next activity. What is he doing? ¿Qué está haciendo? He is cooking, right? He is cooking. ¿Y qué no está haciendo? ¿Qué podríamos decir que no está haciendo? He is not playing, right? He is not playing. Very good. Now is your turn. The present continuous, this is your activity, right? What we are going to do. ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer? 
write the ing for of the verb below. Vamos a escribir el verbo, pero con ing. Pero hay algunas reglas que debes de saber. For example, when the verb has only one syllable, en el, cuando el verbo solamente tiene una sola sílaba, ¿no? Tiene, por ejemplo, swim, right? Tenemos que duplicar la última letra y le agregamos el ing. For example, tenemos la primera es swimming, right? Es swimming. Swim, duplicamos la m y le agregamos ing. Swimming. Number two is shine. When the verb finish in e, you have to eliminate letter e and you have to add ing. Eliminas la letra e y agregas ing. ¿Ok? Es el mismo caso de make. ¿Verdad? Eliminamos la e y agregamos ing. En este caso sería shining and making. ¿Right? Ahí lo tenemos arriba en la parte superior. Next. Siguiente. Tenemos run. Es una palabra que tiene solamente una sola sílaba. Entonces, duplicamos la última letra y le agregamos ing. Sería running. Right? Running. Very good. Next is decorate. Decorate. ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer ahí? Eliminamos la E y le agregamos la ING. Decorating. Ahora tenemos otra regla. Los verbos que tienen una sola sílaba y terminan en I y en E, vamos a cambiarlo por la Y y le agregamos ING. Es el caso de lying. Lying. ¿Ok? Siguiente, tenemos read. Le agregamos ing. No hay mayor dificultad en eso. Do, doing. Agregamos ing. Have. ¿Qué sucede ahí? Vamos a eliminar la e y le colocamos ing. Very good. Have. Wearing. ¿Ok? No hay mayor dificultad. Studying. ¿Ok? Lo mismo. Play. Playing. Very good. Now, with the next activity, you have to complete the sentences with the verb to be and the verb with ing. Okay, this is this is all for today, students, and good luck. Goodbye.